So today we're going to have a quick look at ISO 5817, which is a brilliant standard for capturing quality levels of imperfections. It, in my view, gives the information in a very easy to understand and access way, which means you can make fairly quick decisions on what is best for your product and the correct way to accept and reject. So not everything is in scope. As we can tell by the, the title of the document, we're covering fusion welds. I'm going to say arc welds for where, I, where my mind's at. Uh, it's materials greater than half a millimeter in thickness, and it covers all types of steel, nickel, titanium, and their alloys. So it has a, a good range of materials to cover, um, but not everything. Uh, some notable exceptions in there, which you would need a different version of this standard to, to capture. Very clearly, what's in scope is, is there, so what's out of scope is not there. So beam welding, again in the title, that's covered by another standard, 13919-1, and any materials less than half a mil. So 5817 captures the requirements and your ac acceptability within three quality levels. So levels B, C, and D. Level B being the most stringent or the highest quality level through to D at the lowest. It also captures a lot of different loading conditions. So whether that be, like it's here, static, thermal, corrosion, pressure, and fatigue. But some things to note is, especially when we're in fatigue, is that we've got to fall back to Annex C within 5817 because it makes some changes to the main document to, to tighten up defects which are going to affect fatigue life. Um, we've also got here the term quality is defined as the type, size and amount of the selected imperfections. So a lower quality allows more of that defect. So when we're assessing our imperfections, some, some big points to, to kind of pull out is we've got this thing called systematic imperfections, which are only permitted within quality level D. Anything that is constantly appearing through our weld, it C and B is not allowed. We also have to group imperfections in a certain way. So here we've got imperfections that are separated by a distance smaller than the major dimension of the smaller imperfection shall be considered as a single imperfection. Okay, there's a lot of words there, but really what this is saying is I've got a defect and then the same defect near it. So here I've got let's say a lack of sidewall fusion at 70 mil and 20 mil. Here, my gap between them is 10. So 10 millimeter is smaller than the smallest imperfection at 20 mil. So really what I need to do is group them two together as a single imperfection of 90 millimeters. Um, and of course, that may move something from being an accept to a reject uh, in certain circumstances. Now, our table is relatively well laid out. I, I like it. Like, so you've got a top header here. Um, in on here, we've got a number. So every defect has a number within this, this um, the standard. We've got a reference to another ISO standard called 6520. Now, this standard gives detailed descriptions based on that number. So that 100 there. And for example, we can look at that and say, reference number 100 is a crack within 6520. And then it gives a more detailed description about what that defect is. 
So if you're unsure about how to define what you're seeing, 6520 goes away to, to try and give you that give you that help. Um, and of course we've got the imperfection designation as a crack there. Some Defects have, or imperfections have a remark section. This is generally a sketch to try and show what it looks like. Uh, not all of them have it, so in this case, it's, it's blank. We have an applicable thickness range. So for cracks, it's anything above half a mil. In some cases, uh, that line is split, and you might have half a mil and greater or three mil and greater to try and capture it thicker materials and this would affect things like undercut um, where you might get a different acceptance criteria on thicker materials and thin because it's got a different effect on the, on the risk and then of course we've got our d c and b quality levels and you can see here for crack cracks are not permitted at any quality level but for the majority of imperfections within this standard, you're likely to see different requirements between it. Therefore, you need to understand which quality level you're working to. Uh, an example of a statement like that is if you look at well procedure qualification to 15614. In that standard, it tells you at the beginning what quality levels to apply from 5817 for different aspects and it generally gives some a class b some a class c so here's another example here we've got insufficient throat thickness on a fillet weld uh, so what i want to do is just drop in the the top line so it's easier for us to read a bit um, so again we've got our number We've got our ISO reference number, a 6520 uh, reference number at 5213. You've got your remarks, which is giving you a sketch to say, this is where you take your measurements from. And then with this one, we split our thicknesses up from 0 0.5 to three millimeters thick and then greater than three. And you can see we get a variety of different acceptance levels within that. Um, 5817 loves these equations because they can be applied to a lot of different things very easily. So here we've got the height and we can see where H has been measured to off our uh, sketch. So that's like how much it hasn't filled from where we were expecting it to. Height is equal or less than 0 0.2 millimeters plus 0 0.1 of A. So uh, what you've got or what you were meant to have anyway um, and then we can move on from there but you can see right at level b if you've got insufficient fraud thickness it's just not permitted straight out of the bounce and, and away we go uh, now we have covered how to do these equations in one of our previous videos uh, there's a link uh, in the description below where to where this video is uh, there's some examples and a, a bit more of a detailed explanation about how to go through it. So again, he has another one. Now, this is probably one of the most complicated defects or imperfections to capture within 5817. So that's gas pores and, and porosity. Uh, so again, I'll just drop in the top so we can see where we are. Um, here we've got of course two 6520 references because we've got single gas pore and a uniformly distributed porosity um when you look at this there's quite a lot to assess okay so let's try and take it bit bit by bit so if i just move this across so in our first instance we've got a1 okay? So A1's got the maximum dimension of the area of imperfections uh, related to the projected area. So now we need, this is a little bit loose in my opinion, right? It's, it's a hard thing, but for any material greater than half a mil, you need to decide if you're looking at 2.5% for a single layer and a multi-layered 5%. But what does that mean? Now you get those 
percentage numbers from Annex A, which is in 5817. So it's saying here for a single layer, you use the, the projected porosity amount needs to be less than 2.5%. So we can look at 2.5 in that table layer, and that's roughly when you're viewing it in a radiograph, how much porosity you're allowed to have. Um, and again, that's going on at 2.5% surface uh, percentage, which gives you 38 pores with a diameter of one millimeter. Now, that's not the acceptance criteria for the, the gas pore size. It's not saying you can accept one millimeter. We're going to look at the maximum single pore sizes uh, below in a second. But gives you an overview when you look at a radiograph, how much porosity roughly am I allowed to have in comparison? We then got a secondary cross-sectional area measurement, which is based on uh, a cross-sectional view of a field weld or a cut weld. Uh, we're going to ignore that for the time being because that's done in procedure qualification tests. Normally you, you cut the weld, you look at it, you see how much you've got and you, and, and you move on. But let's just look at this for production welds only at the minute. And then we've got our maximum dimension for a single pore. So you can see that's covering butt welds and fillet welds. And again, you get your equation to work out the biggest pole you're allowed to have. So really what you need to do is go through A1 and A2. Everything must pass that's applicable to you, and then you can accept the weld. So again, those D are equal to or greater than 0.4S to a maximum of 5. We cover in the, in the link below. And there's a very quick review of 5817. It's a really good standard. It's one big table which gives us our acceptance over three different quality ranges, D, C, and B. Find your defect type, look at the remarks, apply the calculation, and accept and reject as needed. And that's all for today. So I'll leave it there, and good luck with your studies.